Hello. Welcome to our overview of what's in Sage 50 version 28. I'm delighted to uh, introduce myself, Stephanie from Pembroke, and just to give you a brief overview on Sage 50. What do we have? What would we expect? We've got our customers. So we have a list of all of our customers. You can see here in red, we're identifying anybody over their credit limit. We've got quotations for customers that can be progressed into sales orders and directly into invoices. So again, if you need to run through the whole process, anything from quote, sales order, dispatch, invoice, and right the way posting. On an invoice, right the way through from the sales order, you've got all of your product details, your pricing. And what we can have is we can have a price per product uh, for each customer. And you can write certain details on here and you can see we're posting directly into the nominal and in with our tax code defaulted. So also in our customer area, what we have is we can look at a customer and we've got communications. So we can record communications that we are having with our customers and allow us to review back on what the outcome was of these so therefore, if there's more than one user looking after a customer, they will be able to see what the prior person has said or what the feedback was from them. And we can put notifications and reminders on there. We can all see, also see the activity in our customer and we can drill right the way back if we've generated this order, right the way back to the invoice and to the product lines and see exactly what the details were on each one. We can also see that the payment was made from this reference here. So again, we've got full triangulation around the customer. If we have any bank details that we want to store and do any direct debits, that's also available for us. And as you would expect, you've got refunds, write-offs, um, customer receipts, et cetera, on that area. So if we push ahead here into suppliers, so again, we've got our list of suppliers and you can see here, we've gone over the credit limit. Again, if you look at the edit of the supplier, you can see I'm prompted again, it's over the credit limit and all the details that we can maintain around a supplier, just like a customer down to the bank details if we are paying them through SEPA. We've also got our communications and importantly, our activity. So again, all of the um, details around that um, purchase order, if there's one through for it um, with the product details on it. We can also attach and um, copy invoices here onto a supplier invoice if we wish to, because we're obviously receiving those in. So again, you'd expect your write-off refunds and communications all around the supplier list. But like the sales order, we've also got a list of purchase orders. So again, we can um, create new ones. We can duplicate them. We place them on order, receive and update. And they're all the way through until we can do our bank where we can do e-payments and we can do remittance advices, email back. We've also got our reconciliation. So everything there that runs through the business money in, money out, we can reconcile back to our bank statement, or we can do the e-banking bank feeds if we wish to. We've got a chart of accounts that helps support our uh, management reports. So anything here from our profit and loss and our balance sheet, quick access reports, or we've got a number of different formatted reports here in the background all of those. And if we run a sample one of our profit and loss, so if we run, we can save them to favorites if we wish to, and we can preview it. So we'll run it for the period of time that we need to. And you'll see here anything in blue, I'm allowed to drill down. So I have designed this that I'm going to divide up to be product sales and other sales. But once I go into product sales, as you can see here, I can drill down what's under product sales. And they're just creating little tabs at the top over here. So again, that runs through the, the management reports there for you. As you'd expect, you have to uh, run your VAT returns. And um, once everything is posted with all the correct VAT codes and used correctly, which we can help you set up, 
then it will all post in here onto your VAT return. And you can upload that onto Ross, um, post it manually, and that will post the bank transaction and the nominal journal across your nominal accounts for VAT. You've got an audit trail here behind the scenes of every single transaction. And we've got additional modules here that we could run through with you, fixed assets, department reporting, or projects. So if there's anything there that you would be happy to get a further demo on, please don't hesitate and look us up on pembroke.ie and we'd be happy to give you a more detailed demonstration.